And I understand that it is more comfortable to be in denial, to say, no, it's secret, because it is too frightening to accept that it is not. You, you have lived this. You have believed this because your, your prime ministers and your premiers and your leaders and your chief elections officers and your election and Congress commission chairmen and chairwomen have told you all these years that the vote is secret. But they're lying to you. They have lied to you. And to answer your question, did I ever try? That same night at St. Mary's Hall, when I first found out from this guy, mm -hmm. who did I go to? I went immediately to Manuel Esquivel, who was the party leader. And I said to him, Mr. Esquivel, do you know what I just found out? They can tell how you vote. And it's true, it is so simple. I was dismissed. Like many people today dismiss you. That's nonsense. That can never be so. That, that's utter nonsense. But I went further than that. Sandra Coy and I, Sandra says she, she did it even before me. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't aware of that. That's not important right now. But I remember engaging years later with Sandra Coy to say, guess what? We're going to take the bull by the horn and we're going to bust this thing wide to the public. But what happened? Roy Young was the chief elections officer at that time. And Roy Young and the whole elections and boundaries commission started a campaign to, to, to discredit Sandra and I, that we don't know what they talk about and we just want to destabilize as some people are doing in 2017. It, nothing has changed. Yeah. But the difference in 2017 and whatever year it was back then when we just scoured and, and bowed out and just went silent is because I am sufficiently mature now. I have experienced the corruption in the election process. A lot of you don't know what I went through in 1984 to defeat George Price, you know. If you think it was a clean election back then, there's nothing from the truth. And it was the same Roy Young that I had to encounter. He was the chief elections officer. When they split the Freedom Division into Caribbean shows and Freedom, man, they padded that Freedom list with every PUP vote you can think of. There were PUP voters at houses, at addresses that did not exist. Bushy lot with 20 voters registered there, all PUP. The dividing line is St. Thomas Street. And this is no disrespect to these two people because I like them. No, I have no problem with them. But they're known PUPs and they were loyal to George Price. So Billy Musa and his wife Rose Musa who still live where they live today, in front of the fisheries, they, Roy Young, had them on the free tongue list in 1984, even though the dividing line was St. Thomas Street. Now look how far past St. Thomas Street Billy Musa and his wife lives. Asad Shuan, who lived on Princess Margaret Drive past St. Thomas Street, he too was on the free tongue list. And Roy Young went to court, went to court, now he's the chief elections officer, went to court, to defend the integrity of that list to the judge and swore under oath that every voter on that list was bona fide, legitimate, and that none was fraudulent. And because I knew he was lying, I lost my temper one day in the court and said, you are lying. And he said, right there from the witness stand, you want me to beat you? No, I'm a this. I was a very skinny kid at that time with a big upper, but my back, my, I was so skinny, my belly was touching my back. And Roy Young was this tall, strong man. But when he said, you want me to beat you? I said, well, let the fight start right in here. And I charged after him in the witness box. And Mr. Singh, Judge Singh, had to close down the court and call us in and gave us a due good lecture and said, if we ever try that again, he's going to dismiss everything I saw. But while he scolded us and he upheld the law, if it wasn't for the integrity of Mr. Singh, Judge Singh, I would never have known what it was to, to would have been to defeat George Price because the PUP had um, Lois Young, Derek Courtney, I could name um, Edwin Flowers. The top brass PUP were in court fighting to keep that list without a name being struck off. I went to the um, 
our um, legal advisor at the time, who was Dean Barrow, Sole Arguez was with me. She is my witness that I'm not lying. Dean's office at the time was at the Beacon and Church Street. When I found out the fraud, I went to him first as the legal advisor for the party. I said, Dean, I have a problem in Freetown. I have over 370 odd names on the list that are illegally on there, that should be there. Dean said, I don't believe in idiosyncrasies. You have to deal with that on your own. And Soli and I packed up our voters list. We walked out of the Beacon's office. And right then I decided, I said, God, just show me what I am to do in this fight. Because obviously I have to fight it alone. So I was there day in, day out at court with seven top PUP lawyers at age 24. I only turned 25 on the 15th of November, one month before the elections. You know, when I was fighting the whole PUP army, I was 24 years old. Not a legal brain in my head. But God showed me. They don't live at those addresses, Derek. Register some letters to those addresses where, by law, they have to sign to receive those letters. And if the postman not find them, the postman have a right that they don't live here, there. And that's exactly what I did. And so even the people who were, li who were supposedly living at fraudulent addresses, but they really didn't live there because they wouldn't be at home when the mailman got there. The mailman was able to interview the occupants of the house, not always the person who is colluding to cover the, 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 the fraud. And he was able to write on those letters, John Brown does not live at this address, has never lived. Or John Brown comes here from PG only on the weekend, but does, has never lived here, and things like that. And when I presented it to court, to, to the court to Mr. Singh, Mr. Singh struck out 367 names off that list, including Billy and Rose Musa and Asad Schumann and all of them, and told Roy no, you put them on the correct list where they belong. Did you think it stopped there? The night before the elections, this is classic. A lot of people have never heard this then either. Around 11 o'clock, the night when we got the list, for, that will open the polls 7 o'clock the next morning. You see, when the good Lord, the guide, God tell you, don't you ever take your eyes off that list. Don't you, every time it changes, you make sure you vet it. And sure enough, when we got the list at 11 o'clock that night, they had taken off the 367 names that the judge had struck out in the court, you know. But they added over 300 names of PUPs from Port Loyola onto the list that will be used 7 o'clock the morning when the polls open. But thank God that he gives me the determination that he does. My wife and I, she's my witness, we went to the corner of Castle and Lancaster Street. That's where Judge Singh lived. I was embarrassed. We got the man up out of his bed in his pajamas. And I said, Mr. Singh, sir, I have bad news. They took the names off the list that you struck out in court. That they did, but they've added over 300 more out of Port Loyola onto the freedom list that will be used in the next morning. Mr. Singh said, what? I said, sir, I'm telling you, we have just gone through it. He picked up the phone right there. I mean, the man took my, he saw the diligence with which I was going through this thing. He picked up the phone, he said, Royal, let me tell you something. I, it has been brought to my attention that the free tongue list that we're supposed to start the election with at 7 o'clock has on 300 odd names from Port Laiola. I have been made aware who they are, who the names are. And I'm telling you, if you do not remove these 300 names and produce a new free tongue list by 7 o'clock tomorrow, the accurate free tongue list as I have written on in the court, then the polls will not open at 7 o'clock in the Freetown Division in this country. 5 o'clock, we got the list again. And the names had been removed. The Port Loyola, the Port Loyola PUP names had been taken off. And so what we had at the 11th hour was the true list that Mr. Singh had signed off that day when he struck off the 367 of the Free Tongue Register. Ladies and gentlemen, the rest is history. You know how many votes I won by that night? 
306 votes. This was a calculated, premeditated plan that the elections and boundaries people with the chief elections officer, with the government of the day, had planned to ensure that George Price would win his seat by any means whatsoever out there. And I will tell the UDP now, if you have not learned, that what happened to you in 1979, when you all thought that the party would win, and I thought they would have won too, I was studying, and I came home that day just to work for Dean Lindo in Fort George. Tansasa had a flight that arrived at 7 from Miami in Belize and departed at 7 for Miami. I arrived, and the customs officers at the airport, the immigration, everybody was. Peace, victory, victory. I mean, victory, what you, you could smell it, you could taste it. It was in the air. There was no way few peace could win that election. But what happened? Like flags, one by one that night. The first one was Paul Rodriguez. Then Dean Lindo, one by one. I was up, I don't know how I ended up at, at um, Vasquez's house on Albert Street, where Channel 7 is. That's where they were living then. I didn't know who Ned Vasquez was. I don't know who the people were. But I ended up there. Zenaida, Belizeans, let me tell you. For the first time in my life, I saw big man and woman bark. With every result that came over that radio that night, people were fainting. They had to bring them back with green alcohol. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. People take politics. People, they do. I thought people were going to have a heart attack because the UDPs were so sure that they would have won that election. And one by one, they drop like flies. But, and you have all sorts of disappearing ink and all that. It had nothing to do with that. They had simply padded the divisions that they knew they needed to pad to bring home the PUPs where they knew they were weak because it was a UDP wave. They, if things had gone fairly, the UDPs would have won that thing a landslide. But see, we always underestimate the PUP. We always do. And they were crafty enough to do the study, do their math, do their homework, and take this from this division, that from that division, pad the candidates that they knew were vulnerable. Hmm. That's why the late Harry Courtney beat the popular Ken Tillett by eating one vote, you see? But the PUPs knew how weak Courtney was against Kentillit, so they padded the division to bring him up to par with Kentillit. But it still wasn't enough. He had to eat a vote. But he became the minister, and Kentillit lost. Notice what happened with Lindy Rogers. Now, Lindy Rogers was unquestionably one of the most popular politicians for the PUP. But they took so many voters from him to put in other divisions to help other people they took too much. And a novice, a political novice like Pearl Thompson, defeated Lindy Rogers that night. Why? Because they took too much of Lindy's voters from him. You see. But ladies and gentlemen, yes. um, I, I know you had told me that you want to talk about the whole registration process. Yes. And if we can jump to that, because this is why, this is why the registration process it's yes. so important in this country. You see a lot of people, even the political leaders because and parties, clamoring for re-registration. I am with you. I am clamoring with you for the re-registration because it is something that the Constitution, just like the secret ballot, the Constitution provides for the timely re-registration in this land. So for it to be arbitrarily disrespected by the powers as it has been done right up until recently, is unacceptable and should not be accepted and tolerated by our people. It should not. However, however, I hasten to advise you, political parties, that unless, unless your party is so organized and fortified with the resources needed to monitor and regulate those dishonest election officers in those offices, not all of them are, but some of them are brutally dishonest. A lot of them are on the payroll of the political parties to turn a blind eye when you bring in people who you know don't live at those addresses that they're bringing them up. If you are not careful and vigilant, the same thing will happen 
when the re-registration process comes around. And the same fraudulent voters that are in Queen Square, that are in Mesop, that are in every single division in this country, I'm not just signaling those two, I, I, I'm just starting a name to name all divisions. The same fraudulent voters that sit in those same divisions around this nation today, before the, pre, the re registration, is going to end up right back on the list when the re registration process is over. So the whole thing would have been futile if you do not have the means to methodically and, and strategically scrutinize the process to make sure that everyone that ends up on your list is a bona fide resident at every address on that list because they are out to make sure that they pad those lists again through the same re-registration and only you and your work can stop it. Well, Derek, we're going to have to ensure that we discuss this. And I must say it has been extremely informative. That's why I have left you because... <laughs> and I didn't mean, I didn't mean, to, I didn't mean to... I had well, my I, questions, I, further questions, because yeah. there are certain things we have to do. But mm. there's one thing before we go. Sure. Um, I have asked... This show has been... Um, it's a Sinai Moya show. And oh, I have yeah. had a pleasure <laughs> um, hosting it. But I have... I have I have been looking at having a co-host, someone that would also be able to lend, you know, a, a helping hand during times in terms of questions and, and sometimes just for us to have discussions and so forth. And I have asked Mr. Derek Aikman. Oh, this is the big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have asked him to be my co-host. And as you can see, even myself, I... I appreciate what you, what you brought today and how much you have enlightened so many people because I believe this is one of the most important shows that I have held and I really appreciate it. And when I listen to you, I, I just love it. I, I appreciate every word you said and how much you have educated me and, and, and taught me tonight and so many of our viewers. And so I have asked Mr. Derek Aikman, I also call it honorable, he, <laughs> he, he has done so much in his lifetime uh, to be the co-host and he has, under the under Bufford, he has agreed to be the co-host on this show. So Derek will, no, yeah, you will be seeing him next week, Wednesday, at the same time. Uh, you will be seeing him, but you will not be seeing him as a guest. You will be seeing him <laughs> as the co-host. Representing to myself. Buffer Buffered. out there. Diaspora, <laughs> do you hear me? You have a voice now on this show through me, all right? So That's right. they better get ready for us. <laughs> That's right. And I'm okay with that because as I told you, I support it. Just one certain thing, okay? Uh, yeah, and I'm That's okay with right. it because we want the best person. We want really good people to be able to, 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 to help us in Belize. Yeah. Um, as long as they, they understand the battles and they truly want to help, I don't see anything wrong with it. But I want to say that um, we had more to come, so next week we're going to have sure. to continue what we were discussing. And um, I want to go ahead and thank... Could, um, could I have just one? There's something that I, I, I will well, die if I don't make an announcement. Okay. I just, I'll take one minute. One minute? Um, yes. Okay, because um, we want to have... I'll put out a press release tomorrow, but we're buffered... We are concerned about the poverty, the crime, the unemployment. We are committed to wanting to try and see how we can generate economic activity. Yes. To this end, I am launching on Saturday the first ever Belize Lakeshore Mall and Flea Market. Up uh, exactly where I live there on the Boom Road, there's a huge lake a lot of people might not be aware of in the back. Huge lake. So we want to convert that into a Saturday activity a flea market and a mall right along the lake where people can come bring their what it, it's almost like like an expo where you bring your products you 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 rent your space you sell your stuff uh, but we're going to have additional things like you know water ski uh, jet ski canoe race and soccer the lake is so big um, uh, beach volleyball while the people are, are buying and selling their things so please call 6210764 or 205-2243 to arrange to buy your, your space and um, it's only $25 for the small man 
people like Brodies and Save You and other large entities will, will be paying more. But it's a way to bring business, like bring the shopping to you there in the Belize rural area. And my hope is that this will become such a big event that every Saturday, um, every Belize, the, the only place every Belizean will want to go is to the Belize and Lake Shore. And it will Shore, bring togetherness. Lake I can Shore, see Berlin, yeah, um, Mall and, and Flea Market. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. So please come out. Buses will leave. There will be buses leaving the city um, from Cinderella Plaza and from Pongyard Bridge. It's only a dollar for the bus each way. And it's only $2 for adults to enter the, the grounds and a dollar for children. So... All right. Thank you, Derek. Yeah. I want to thank you for being a guest on this show. <laughs> and I'll be welcoming for the you last next time, week. No? Yes, as <laughs> okay. a co host. And just to inform the viewers that the repeat of this show will be on Sunday, 12 noon, on Creme Television. Of course, you can always watch a version, the live stream version, on the Sinaida Moya Show Facebook page. Thank you to our sponsors. Uh, Belize Electricity Limited, Universal Hardware, Smart Belize, and Moya Shepherd and Company Limited. Thank you to our technical staff, uh, Cliff, Abdullah Sif, Dejanira, Thompson. Thank you to our viewers. You have been wonderful. And continue to give us your comments, your feedback. I will see you here next week, same time. Well, at 8. We will see you. We yeah. will see you. Yeah, I have to start saying we will see you 8 p.m. next week. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Kelvin and Natalia, for, for, for inspiring me to do this show. Have a safe and wonderful week. And I do hope, because I did say that um, I would have mentioned it with Kelvin, um, just anybody who knows who yeah, knows about yeah. um, Kelvin Usher, to so please contact 667-4795 or 630-0611 or 600-8541. We know what it is to, to have a child and at the end of the day to not know where he is. I'm sure it's extremely devastating. So please, please, please let us get this solved quickly. God bless you all.